benevolent, generous, and capable of putting up with indignities, these traits earned Bougie much respect from many people. Originally a scholar of a humble background, he gradually rose through the ranks under Sun Chuan, who had noticed Lady Bu's beauty in Lu Jiang. Bu Zhi was a relative of Bu Lian Shi, who was known to be very accepting of Sun Chuan's other wives, so she became his favoured concubine in the long term. Bu Zhi was also able to hide his emotions well, by projecting either a calm or serious demeanour. Pei Songzhi criticised him though for supporting Sun Chuan's youngest son Sun Ba in the succession struggle, which he claims left a huge stain on Bu Zhi's good reputation. He was from his ancestral home of Hua Yin County, Lin Hua Commandery. He traced his lineage to an aristocrat of the Jin state in the spring and autumn period. His estate was located in an area called Bu, so henceforth it became their family name. Another member of the Bu family was a disciple of Confucius himself, then later on in the early Han Dynasty, a certain Bu was awarded Hua Yin as his marquisate. Bu Zhi is first recorded fleeing south to Jiangdong when the chaos broke out in the central plains. He arrived alone and penniless, but befriended one Wei Jing from Guangling Commandery, who was around the same age as him. They farmed crops to feed themselves, where Bu Zhi tirelessly toiled in the fields in the day, and diligently read books in the night. It wasn't long until he became well versed in literature, but also gained a few skills in various arts and crafts. Those who came to know him saw him as kind-hearted, deep thinking, and able to put up with shame or humiliation. The pair headed south and settled in Kuaji Commandery, where they encountered an influential landlord named Xiao Zheng Xiang. His real name was Xiao Jiao, but he was called Zheng Xiang after his old prefecture. He allowed his retainers to act lawlessly, so Bu Zhi and Wei Jing became fearful that he might one day seize their farmland. They decided to go off and offer him a tribute, but when they arrived he was asleep, so they had to wait outside. Wei Jing became impatient and wanted to leave, but Bu Zhi stopped him. We came here because we feared he would seize our land. If we come to visit, and then leave without even meeting him, he might think we're insulting him, and then we'll only end up antagonising him. After some time he woke up, saw them through the window, and instructed his servants to lay mats on the ground whilst he remained inside. Wei Jing was infuriated, but Bu Zhi remained calm and composed. Lunchtime eventually came, where Xiao feasted on tasty dishes without inviting them in to join. Instead, he gave them scraps of food served in small bowls. Wei Jing was so unhappy that he didn't even try to eat his vegetables or mushrooms, but Bu Zhi finished all the food he got. They bid their host farewell and left. When Bu was asked later how he could put up with all that nonsense, he replied, We're of a low status and he treated us as such. What is there to be ashamed of? Some point in the 200s, Bu Zhi was recruited by Sun Chuan, where he became his chief scribe, and later the chief of Hua Yin County. After a few years though, Bu Zhi claimed he was sick and retired from office. He travelled around the Wu territories of Zhu Jin and Yan Jun, during which he earned himself a fine reputation as a learned man. Seemingly straight after the Battle of Red Cliffs in 209, Bu Zhi returned to service under Sun Quan as an assistant in the East Office Bureau of the General of Chariots and Cavalry, and as an assistant officer in the headquarters of the Governor of Shu Province. Both of these assistant roles were to aid Sun Quan, who held both of the greater titles, he also nominated Bu Zhi as a Mao Kai during this time. In under one year, Bu Zhi was assigned to be Po Yang's administrator, but got promoted in a matter of months to be the inspector of Xiao province. For his mission, he was made a general of the household, so he trained a unit of men compromised of a thousand elite archers. During the years of 168 to 189, during Emperor Ling's reign, Xiao province had posed serious problems for the Han central government, as it was so remote and far away. The locals who were unwilling to submit to Han rule had caused much trouble by killing two Han-appointed governors. Liu Biao had attempted to expand his rule into Jiao, but the government countered this by putting the native Xi Ji in charge of the six southern commanderies. One of his subordinates, Wu Ju, got into an argument with Lai Gong, then forced him to flee the area. The next year, Bu Ji was granted more honours by Sun Quan and sent into Jiao to replace Lai Gong. When he heard of the incoming army, Xi Ji led his followers to submit to Bu Zhi's governorship, but Wu Ji refused and secretly plotted to have him assassinated. He harboured ill intentions as he pretended to cooperate with him, but Bu Zhi saw straight through it. Wu Ji was outwitted, lured into a trap, and then very quickly executed. This incident shocked all of the elites in the area, including Xi Ji, who soon arrived with his followers and pledged themselves to Sun Chuan. 
As Yonkai had contacted Shiji earlier about defecting to Wu, he relayed the message to Bu Zhi at this time, who sent an emissary to accept Yonkai's surrender as well. Thus, the whole of Xiao province then became part of Wu's domain, with Bu Zhi as its governor. In just under 10 years, Bu Zhi had amassed over 10,000 volunteer troops. In 220, Liu Dai arrived to replace Bu Zhi, so he led his men north to Changsha Commandery in preparation for the Battle of Yiling. Leading up to the battle, Ma Liang bribed some tribes in Wu Ling with titles and money to gain their support. As the Shu army got closer, the tribes grew more restless, so Bu Zhi was ordered by Sun Quan to station at the river city of Yi Yang to deal with any problems. He guarded the area from attacks by rebels, but even after victory was found at Yi Ling, there was still much unrest around Ling Ling and Gui Yang. He led his men to put down these uprisings too, then restored peace to the region. He was promoted the following year and had his Marquis State title changed before being relocated to Wu Ku. When Sun Quan became emperor, he wanted to install Lady Bu as the empress, even though his subjects nominated Lady Shu instead. He rejected their suggestions by leaving the position of empress empty, and in time, everyone in the family and palace referred to Bu Lianxi as the empress. Bu Zhi was appointed general of the Agile Cavalry and the nominal governor of Xi province. The next year, his nominal title was stripped, and he was sent to replace Lu Zun at Xi Ling, acting as the new military commander, tasked with guarding the border against Xu. Lu Zun was relocated to Wu Chang to assist Sun Quan's eldest son Sun Deng and oversee all civil and military affairs in Jing province. Sun Deng knew little of the officials of Wu, so he went around actively networking with many people. He wrote to Bu Zhi, seeking his advice on whom he should talk to first, and was told how critical it is that he attracts as many talents as possible. Bu Zhi then listed off the 11 notable people currently serving in Jing province, and appraised them all individually. Zhu Gejin, Lu Zun, Zhu Ran, Cheng Pu, Pan Jun, Pei Xuan, Xie Hao Cheng, Li Su, Zhou Diao, Xi Gan, and the friend from his youth, Wei Jing. He also advised his lord to refrain from micromanaging, and instead learn from great leaders who delegate the detailed tasks to the most capable governors. Assigned as the supervisor of the Audit Bureau was the deeply corrupt Liu Yi. He was highly trusted by Sun Quan, so was put in charge of the council who reviewed the work of all of the Wu state officials. He abused his power by picking up on trivial errors which he then used to frame those serving under him. He freely investigated and prosecuted many innocents, some of whom were arrested, imprisoned and tortured. Neither Sun Quan's son-in-law, Zhu Zhu, or the Imperial Chancellor, Gu Yong, were free from his malice. Bu Zhi wrote to Sun Quan at least four times to speak up against Liu Yu's abuses of power. He told his lord to rely on the capabilities of Gu Yong, Lu Zun, and Pan Jun, pointing out that there are too many bureaucrats in the administration, so they need to be dismissed. Each time he wrote letters to defend Liu Yi's victims, he recommended that they were reinstated to their old jobs. When Sun Quan eventually discovered the truth, he realised the gravity of the situation, so Liu Yi was removed from office and then executed. Throughout this entire ordeal, Sun Quan did not accept every piece of advice from Bu Zhi, however, his efforts ultimately saved many officials from doom. When the power struggle for succession broke out in the 240s, it had a polarising effect on all the Wu subjects, which led to two opposing factions forming. Bu Zhi took sides of Sun Ba, and deemed him as the rightful heir over Sun He, who had already been designated by Sun Quan. To put an end to the infighting, both sons were removed from the picture, then replaced with Sun Liang, the youngest of the seven sons who Sun Quan was very happy to have at his old age of 60. Pei Songzhi remarked, This event had a huge negative impact on Bu Zhi in particular, because he had a reputation for being virtuous and generous. Nevertheless, some of the officials involved in the struggle were executed, exiled, or removed from office, but Bu Zhi remained unaffected. In his final years, Bu Zhi memorialised to the court, warning that the Wei forces were planning to fill up the Yangtze River with sandbags, then cross over on them to attack Jing province. Sun Quan doubted it. Every time I read this letter, I can't stop laughing. That river has existed since the beginning of life. How can anyone use sandbags to fill it up? If that ever happened, I'd have a thousand cattle slaughtered for a feast in his honour. In 246, Bu Zhi succeeded Lu Zun as Wu's Chancellor. Even after assuming the highest office in Wu, he never stopped reading or giving lectures to his students. His outfit, house, and living quarters all resembled the simplicity of a Confucian scholar. 
for behind his walls, his wife and concubines wore expensive dresses and jewellery, which some people laughed at him for. In the 20 years he was stationed at Xiling, he had gained the respect of his enemies from the neighbouring areas. He won the hearts of the people through charitable acts until his death, sometime between 20th of June and 19th of July 247. Bu Xi inherited his father's marquis state, but Bu Shan inherited his legacy and became the new military commander at Xi Ling. In 272, during the years of the last Wu Emperor Sun Hao's reign, he was recalled to the capital to serve as a commander of the guards. Because his family had been at Xi Ling for a while, he thought he was going to be punished for underperformance and didn't want to become a victim of slander. He defected to the Jin Dynasty, then surrendered Xi Ling over to them and sent his sons Bu Ji and Bu Xuan to Luoyang. Both of them were enfiefed and promoted, but Bu Ji was put in charge of military affairs in Jiangling. Bu Chan was allowed to continue overseeing affairs at Xi Ling by the Jin court, who soon sent Yang Hu and Yang Zhao to lead troops to reinforce his position. Lu Zun's son, Lu Kang, dubbed as the last hero of Wu, led troops to suppress Bu Chan's rebellion. He drove back the Jin forces, retook Xi Ling, then captured and executed Bu Chan. The entire Bu family, except for Bu Xuan's branch, was then exterminated. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.